Hello everyone, welcome to my presentation. My name is Vines and I'm going to present my research work which is entitled From Classic GNNs to Hyper GNNs for Detecting Camouflage Malicious Actors. This is the outline of my presentation. First of all, I would like to just um, introduce myself and then go into the detail of my work. I'm a second year PhD student in computer science at Macquarie University, Sydney, Australia. And I've been awarded research excellence scholarships by Australia government. My research areas include uh, graph neural networks, geometric deep learning, graph data mining, and graph-based anomaly detection. And specifically, my PhD research focuses on toward in enhancing GNN-based fraud detection systems. Let's have some background. According to the Australian Cybersecurity Center, from 2020 to 2021, around 70,000 cyber crimes have been reported, and the victims' losses are more than 33 billion Australian dollars. Um, this diagram shows the cyber crimes reported by type, as you see that the first place goes into the fraud. So we can conclude that building a very safe and secure internet environment is a vital task. So in this regard, many, many graph-based approaches have been proposed. And uh, we know that in graph setting, both uh, benign users and fraudsters can, can be represented as nodes, and connection between nodes can be represented as edges. And the objective of fraud detection systems is to just distinguish fraudsters from normal users. Recently, as we know that the graph neural networks models have achieved great success in the literatures and they have become a very powerful tools for graph learnings. And basically, we know that the GNN models act based on the message passing mechanisms. And we know that in the message packet passing mechanisms, they just, in order to present, uh, in order to produce a representation for a central node, such as a red node here, they aggregate the information from their neighbors. And um, so we can conclude that one of the most important part of, parts of the GNM models is the aggregation process. And the performance of the GNM models heavily, heavily rely on this part. GNM models can be categorized into two domains, a spectral and a spatial domains. All the existing GNM models have achieved great success in the literatures, but they also suffer from the camouflage behavior of malicious actors. But what is the camouflage behavior of malicious actors? Uh, in order to see what is this, I will introduce two types of attack models in the networks. Uh, the first attack models, which is this one, which is induced by camouflage fraudsters. Um, the camouflage fraudsters try to just connect to many normal connections in the network in order to hide themselves from being detected. Uh, in contrast, we have uh, non-camouflage fraudsters in the network and um, in the second type of attack model, which is induced by non-camouflage fraudsters, fraudsters try to just connect to those of fraudsters in the network. And so in order to act as a group of fraudsters to reach a common goal. In addition, in the literature and based on previous study, we can see that the GNM models work well for assortative types of networks. In assortative networks, nodes in the neighborhood belongs to just the same class labels, and we just have um, hemophilic connections in the, in the graph. In contrast, in these assortative networks, we have uh, actually nodes belong to the different class labels, so we have a combination of hemophilic and heterophilic connections. As I introduced in the previous slides, the camouflage behavior of malicious actors create, create, uh, create this assortativity in the networks. So that's why the performance of GNM models can be hindered significantly during the aggregation process. So the main reason behind this is that the existing GNM models usually um, utilize, just utilize the low frequency information in the aggregation process. And uh, they act as a low pass filter. What is the notion of frequency in this literature? Uh, the frequency means the variation between feature vectors in the nodes in the, in the whole graph. If we, the features of uh, nodes are similar to each other, we have just low frequency information. And in contrast, if the, the features are different from each, each other, so we have high frequency information in the graphs. And existing GNM models act as a low pass filter and just get the low frequency information in the aggregation process. They just do this in order to get the commonality between node features. 
So, and they just suitable for associative types of networks. So, inherent, there is a question rises here inherently. And the question is, what is the role of high frequency information in the aggregation process? And uh, usually existing uh, GNM models ignore the high frequency information in the aggregation process. So we are interested in uh, actually investigating this problem that uh, we need to obtain the difference between node features. And it seems that it's much more suitable for these associative types of networks. So we try to investigate these two research problems. The first research problem is that designing a new adaptive aggregation strategy to obtain um, more comprehensive node embedding in the aggregation process. And the second research question is that how can we utilize this adaptive aggregation strategy to just enhance the current GNM models to detect both camouflage and non-camouflage for the search? So we propose a model. The model includes two steps. The first step is the filtering process, and the second one is adaptive aggregation process. This is um, the general overview of our model. The first part includes the filtering process. In the filtering process, we try to remove uh, the bias camouflage uh, before the aggregation process. Uh, we usually have two kinds of camouflage. In the literature, random camouflage and bias camouflage. In the random cam camouflage, fraudsters try to randomly connect to those fraudsters, uh, those, uh, sorry, normal users in the network. But in contrast, in bias camouflage, they try to just uh, connect to those high degree and popular nodes in the networks. And we try to remove uh, the bias camouflage because we believe that the just high degree and popular nodes in the network, ne ne in the network cannot contribute to unique representations. So uh, we try to remove this kind of camouflage. And then uh, the second part of our models is the adaptive aggregation process. In the adaptive aggregation process, we try to utilize um, adaptive, an adaptive gateway to utilize both low frequency and high frequency information. So we try to train two coefficient, alpha and beta, which are correspond to low frequency and high frequency information. And there are two things here that, that we need to address. The first thing is that how we can extract low frequency and high frequency information from raw feature vector. And the second thing is that um, how, how we can decide which types of frequencies can be dominated in the aggregation process. So that's why we train these two coefficients, alpha and beta, in order to see which types of I mean, frequencies of information can be dominated in the aggregation process of each neighborhood. And for future proposed research, uh, I'm going to um, adapting hypergenome models for handling camouflage malicious actors. Uh, as you know, the, the hypergraphs try to analyze the attributes, correlations, or high order relations uh, among objects in graphs. And uh, we want to investigate how to directly adapt various GNA models into hypergraph for generating hypergraph representation learning. Thanks for your attention. Thank you.